Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making the cyberpunk sushi restaurant together. So this is going to be a real-time playback and step-by-step -step tutorial. So open your software and grab yourself a cup of coffee or maybe some wine, some beer, whatever beverage that you like, no judgement here, and let's start blending. So firstly, we use the default cube and we delete a few surfaces out of the cube to make a isometric room shape for the setup. And here I am just setting up the camera and the canvas so it's the shape that I want it to be. And changing the dimension and the location of the camera to prepare for the later um, steps. Now the room is set up, I started by doing the tiles first by using a cube here and just give it a little bit of a bevel by pressing Ctrl B. I wanted to give it more dimension so I subdivided the surface and then uh, bring some of the surface down a little bit to create kind of an asymmetrical look. Once the tile is done, I shade it smooth and twist things around a little bit more until it looks like something that I would like to use. And in order to kind of create a variation, I um, shift D to copy the object and then uh, make some other changes so it doesn't look like it's the same tile all the time. Now the tile variation is done, what I need to do is to firstly combine all of these together by pressing Ctrl J and then I can create, uh, yeah I am combining the object here and then use the array modifier to create um, more tiles. So here I spent quite a bit of time trying to adjust the tile to fit the size of the room uh, but it doesn't have to be this complicated I think. You can just use um, an array modifier and then um, kind of adjusting the, the number of tiles accordingly. But here because this size is exactly what I wanted already and it somehow it doesn't really um, fit the number of the tiles that's um, directly replicated through array modifier so I tried to use um, edit mode and give it just two more instead of four more tiles. I 
again here I am twisting and rotating the tiles around so it doesn't look like it's always the same. Now that the tiles are done, I realize that they are slightly bigger than the size of the room. So I used another cube and then a boolean modifier to cut out um, some excessive tiles from the room. So here, because the tires are not subdivided properly, um, by using the boolean modifier, it sometimes doesn't cut out necessarily the exact amount of tiles that I want to cut out. So it's uh, in retrospection, I probably should have shouldn't have done it this way. Uh, the easier way to do it is obviously just basically combining everything together and then um, kind of adjust it according to the size of the room. That would be a much easier way of doing this step. Now the tiles look kind of okay, what I want to do next is to make the counter for the restaurant. So this is going to be when, where the conveyor belt of for sushi is going to lay on. Start out by very simple shapes of, uh, of, of rectangles. and then combining things together. I use the loop tool in um, uh, edit mode to kind of bridge the two things together and then remember to control A to scale your object before you try to bevel it because that's, um, that's how you make the bevel properly. So shift D again to uh, separate the surface to sorry to copy paste the surface and then control P to um, separate the surface to make it into a countertop. Again scale the object, uh, control B to bevel it and lay it on top of the of the counter
and now Control R to create um, two loops around the counter and then you can press E I think here um, to to move the countertop in a little bit so this is where the light strip is going to be later on You can style the counter however you like, to be honest, it doesn't have to be this, um, I mean the, the the shape of it serves the function, but other than that you can um, make it however you like it. Now that the counter is done, we use another cube uh, and then kind of bevel the one of the edges to make the display freezer. Elongate it a little bit along one of the axes and then shape it well and then put it on top of the counter here. So here, by giving it uh, an emission value, we're going to create this um, LED light effect for the strips there. We're going to put another uh, supporting counter underneath the display, um, dis um, display freezer. You can see that I use um, lots of just very simple shapes to create most of my objects in the scene. And now it's time to make some stores. And again, we use a cylinder and then uh, scale the cylinder well and then use um, Control B to bevel the edges again. It's a very kind of a standardized procedure by now. Give it a color. I think here I'm using a dark blue. And then we shift D and create another object, uh, another cylinder that's uh, right underneath it and slightly smaller and give it an emission value as well. But this time blue. Remember to press a sign whenever you add a new color to part of the object. Here I created a circle and then uh, press F to give it the surface and then again um, I to create a loop inside and then use the wireframe modifier so it's only going to take the edge of the object instead of the surfaces and give it kind of a frame look. It's a very handy tool. Um, you can use this. I use this for making uh, bicycle wheels as well. So simple, so quick. For me, I tend to shade the objects quite early on because it gives me an understanding of uh, what's going on in the scene and uh, I can 
plan as I go um, so giving it a color really helped me visualize um, the final product but obviously I know that um, for some people they sketch their scenes first I sometimes do that as well so when you have a sketch you have a better understanding uh, of what you want to achieve in the in the final scene so you don't necessarily have to um, do the shading first but in this particular one um, I don't have any reference to be honest um, couldn't find any cyber punk restaurant <laughs> online which is quite a shame so uh, what I did is that I kind of uh, planned the colors along the way and the shapes as well so it helps me uh, visualize better so here I realized that um, the blue light um, underneath the stores is not as obvious as I want it to be so I just brought it down a little bit more so in the final scene, you can um, see the blue lights. Again, remember to apply the modifier before you combine the objects or else the modifier will either disappear or be applied to the rest of the um, rest of the parts of the object it's not very convenient so remember to apply that first before um, you copy paste everything So here I gave uh, the freezer a glass shader um, so later on we can put um, objects inside and we can still be able to see what's going on in there. Um, I think people have asked me to do a tutorial on how to create some um, standardized uh, material that's, that's used a lot in low poly scene so I might do that one day. Um, if you would like to see that, let me know in the comments as well and I will be able to um, do that maybe next week. So here just press Alt E and then you will see a list, a uh, drop down list and just choose extrude from normals I think. And then you will get this uh, isometric room uh, with thickness. Here you're going to the shading mode and then press uh, Ctrl Shift T I think on the uh, principal shader and then choose all of the textures that you want to use and it will just automatically set that up for you it's really so easy and then you can tweak the values around and um, decide on how you want to generate the image or, or the texture on the actual object and then you can use the scale to see what's going on And here I wanted to give the room kind of a, a bit of a rustic uh, feel to it instead of being super futuristic with all the metallic material because uh, we're going for a cyberpunk look so I think some some things has to be a little bit like retro a little bit different 
So here I created this um, kind of a wall decoration or something and then I segregated parts of the wall and give it uh, a different texture. So here I'm just making firstly a metal frame for that. Next up, I wrote up some texts, and then you go into geometry of the text and give it some depth, uh, some offset maybe. Um, you can tweak around within geometry, and uh, it should be able to. You should be able to achieve the shape that you want eventually. And then again, I used the uh, pink light that I used for the counter for the writings as well. And here, for some reason, after I put the words on the um, on the on the wall, I couldn't see it. It's mostly because of the uh, surface is blocking it. So I decided to delete them, and then just move the wording out a little bit, and you should be able to see it quite clearly. Next, I'm just creating, uh, I think I'm creating two small windows um, at the end of the conveyor belt. So the sushi is going to, well supposedly the kitchen is in there and the sushi is going to come out of there. So very simple, just a simple shape with, um, again, a boolean uh, modifier and the job is done. Alright, that's it for part one of the Cyberpunk Sushi Restaurant and I will see you next week for part two of this journey. Please remember to smash the like button if you enjoy my content and do let me know in the comments if you follow along okay. And I will see you next week. Bye bye.